Hey there, friends. Welcome to another week. Although, remember, the work week is a fiction. Monday, doubly so. You can get rid of them if you really want to. This is Social Justice Alchemy. So I don't know about you, but for me, this has been a week. I'm between semesters right now, and don't let anybody fool you. Teachers don't really get time off, even when they have time off. I've been working to get ready for the coming semester. I always want to improve. I always want to make sure that my students are getting the best education I can give them. So, I mean, that wouldn't really be enough to wear me out by itself, because, you know, I mean, I'm not, I'm not crazy. I'm not going to work my ass off. <laughs> I was only planning on doing light duty uh, and lead up to the semester, but events conspired against me, and uh, I am wore the fuck out. And not only that, but I didn't really have the ability. I didn't have the spoons. Didn't have the spoons to uh, do any sort of prep work on on the alchemy bench this week. So um, this week, instead of my usual scripted sort of thing, I'm going to try a ramble. It's going to be a long ramble. Probably, mostly, almost entirely, exclusively going to be rambling about my week and my day because that's what I want to talk about. And maybe I'll do a little bit of skeptic stuff, maybe some social justice stuff. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> I am tired. I mean, today alone would have been enough to wear me out. I'm gonna level with you. I am typically a night owl and sleep much of the day, which is not a great thing, you know, because most things that need doing need doing during the day, you know, going to the bank, post office, things like that. And plus, you know, I don't know what my schedule is gonna be this semester. Oh, it's I know I'm definitely going to be teaching two classes at one school. Hopefully I pick up a few more at the other one. But um, I don't know exactly what it's going to be, but I'm, I've been trying to work my way back to, you know, getting up in the morning unsuccessfully, very unsuccessfully. But uh, last night, you know, I, I went to bed at you know, 4 a.m. Then, as sometimes happens, you know, I, I woke up at the ass crack of, you know, 7.30 and tossed and turned for an hour, couldn't get back to sleep, so I figured... Just run with it. Got out of bed at eight thirty. Started my day like a like a real person with a credit card and keys and everything. <laughs> that would be enough to make me tired, but not necessarily worn out. Except for the fact that I've I've been you know on the go all day. Now I got a light breakfast, and then I went up you know grocery store. And the important bit was uh, going to PetSmart. I mean, y'all don't care about me getting food for myself and my brother. We, we, you know, we don't matter. What matters is the fur babies making sure they're okay. Went to the pet store to get flea stuff. Uh, the dog absolutely loves <laughs> running around in the woods. Running around in, well, you might call it a creek, but honestly, it's it's a drainage ditch. A big old drainage canal, giant ditch. But loves running around in that. Loves rolling around in tall grass. So he's, we've had... I've been. I have been wrestling with fleas, with some success. I managed to basically get them entirely out of the carpet and the furniture, but baby girl hair has just been suffering something terrible. I have had less luck defleeing her. The medicine I picked up, you know, you squirt it on the back of her neck. It didn't seem to do much. So I went to the pet store, got flea shampoo, flea tick, mosquito, all of it for the dog. And uh, a spray of some kind for her, you know, as the first step for both of them. And got not just a random package of, you know, stuff to put on their back of their necks, but, you know, advantage, you know, the real deal, six-month supply of the good shit. <laughs> no off-brand oxycodone for my girl, no, no, she's getting the straight fentanyl. She's been having a rough time with the fleas, so... Got back from the pet store, 
and and Starbucks. I got myself some candy coffee. I don't think I remember to eat most of the day. But then I sat down and I wrote a test. Uh, you know, you're supposed to write the test first, then you go back and do the lesson stuff. The stuff I managed to get done this week was uh, course outlines and class scheduling. I've got the, I've had the class schedules nailed for the last uh, a couple semesters. Not a problem there. Course outline, I decided to revamp that because I want to redo the uh, videos I have, YouTube videos, lectures, online lectures for them to watch at their leisure. So I redid the course outline, and using that, I'm redoing the tests. So I wrote a test, and then I took the dog for a good long walk, a couple miles, really out into the woods. Uh, let him you know, just run around, act a damn fool, eat random shit off the ground, <laughs> and uh, hop in and out of the creek as he wanted, hoping to wear him out a bit, get him a, get him a good, fun afternoon out in the woods, out in the sun, you know. And plus, let the dog get real nasty dirty and gave me the perfect excuse to, you know, Give him that new flea shampoo. I'm smart. <laughs> so, yep, yep, that was that was a good hour and some out in the woods. That was good for him and good for me, I think. Good for both of us. And then, you know, I showered the dog. That's always an adventure. Don't know if I'm any good at showering a dog, shampooing a dog, but uh, I know I am crap at drying a dog. <laughs> I mean... It's, you know, his favorite part of the shower. He had no problem with it. It was the easiest thing. It's just the towel, the towel was sopping wet before he was dry. And uh, now it's going to be a little while before it's really safe to sit on the sofa. <laughs> but, uh, yep, I, I, I flea shampooed him up real good. Hopefully that'll help him with that. And then I used this other spray I got on Big Girl. She hated that, but. Hopefully, it'll uh, help her with her fleas. She's been really itchy, you know, scratching a lot, and I don't care for it. On the plus side with her, she's finally ventured out of my bedroom into the wider apartment, confronting the dog. She's been voluntarily stuck in my room for the last couple months, really, since we got the dog back in July, August? Oh, barely, really didn't like that. So basically, I forced her out of the room part of the defleeing process, you know. I went ahead and just fumigated my room and, you know, locked her out of it for a while. There's a there's a cat door in my door. Don't worry if any of my landlords happen upon this. I uh I, I bought a door to install the cat door in. <laughs> I didn't just cut a hole in the door. Um but I went ahead and sealed that shut so that she couldn't get back in and she, she just forced her to be outside in the apartment for a little while and then while i was there i just said you know what fuck it i am going to you know reclaim some floor space for myself and went ahead and moved the litter box out of the my bathroom here and into the uh the utility room the space with the washer and dryer and got rid of the big fancy water bowl caleb bought when sappho started doing poorly so now I have a, a lot more space, including you know, the door for my bathroom once again, which means that I'm now starting to leave my bedroom door open so that uh, the dog can come in. But you know, after that day, letting, uh, forcing the cat out into the main room, she's started going out more. Um, she let me know she wasn't happy with the change by peeing on my bed and pooping under my desk, but only once each. And now she's she's really reclaiming the space. She's uh, voluntarily exiting my room and going out into the broader apartment and confronting the dog. She growls at him excessively, but the dog, Wesley, the dread pup Roberts, the dog in black, has learned, don't try to play with the cat, daddy will yell at you. <laughs> and the cat will definitely yell at you. Hoping to convince her that just because he's nearby, she doesn't need to scream at him. Anywho, after I uh, showered the dog and then sprayed the cat and then showered myself, I, uh... I got a little something to eat, I uh, wrote the other test. And finally got the bright idea to write the key for the test at the same time I was writing the test, so that I would be able to really justify the points I was putting on each problem. It made it a little bit harder to write the test, because I uh, was doing the whole thing all at once, having a real focus, really 
there, zoom in, concentrate, focus on what I was doing. More tiring, more uh, effort there. I think it made the test better. It's going to make it harder for the students because the problems are worth less individually, and I, I, I just left myself no real room for just fluff. Um, I just sort of had to justify each individual point I was giving them. So less, you know, mercy points, really. Um, harder tests, lower scores in general, I think, is what's going to happen there. But I also diversified the test a bit. Um, different kinds of questions than I normally do, you know, fill in the blank, which is a very small portion, very small portion of the test, but, um, you know, 10 points out of 100. I'm not going to make a huge difference there. But I think that test is better overall. The first test I did in the afternoon, uh, before the walk, uh, I did not do that. I don't think it'll be as good. I'm going to have to go back and go ahead and do the key, rejigger the points, and it'll probably end up making the test longer. But we'll see. We'll see. I don't know. I think that'll make the test better overall. But yeah, that was my day. 8.30 to 7 o'clock, you know. Just working. I mean, I, that, that, that walk with the dog, you know, hour, hour and a half. So, I mean, I wasn't really working, but I wasn't exactly sitting down. <laughs> I was a walk, you know, three, four miles. I don't know how fast I was walking, but, you know, good long walk. Uh, but that was the day, you know, reason enough for me to be tired. But during the week, the week that came before, it also kicked my ass. And I think explains part of why I was generally more tired today than I would have been, even with, you know, just the few hours of sleep. Because migraines. Ugh. Like I said, I didn't really have the spoons. Yeah, I had some... I had a really bad migraine. And one small migraine before that. I don't know if you know anything about migraines, but uh, um, they have what's uh, called prodrome and postrome. And then when the migraine itself is happening, syndrome, right? Um, prodrome is sort of... It can be, for a really bad migraine, you can have like a slow build up over one or several days where you're just feeling out of sorts and not great. And then the postrome is sort of the come down as or you know, come back up as you recover. Uh and, you know, depends on the migraine sufferer and the kind of migraines they get, you know, whether they even get pre or postrome and how bad those are. For me, I pretty much always get a postrome where like the next day or two I'll feel kind of fuzzy. I've never really noticed a prodrome, but that might just be because, you know, I'm not really looking for it the way I am for the symptoms of the migraine itself, you know. I'm like, I'm just paranoid about uh, that spot in my vision. Is that because I just looked at a bright light, or is that the beginning of the uh, the scotoma? Basically, the the blurry blindness in the center of your vision, the aura. But yeah, I mean, the migraine I got in the middle of the week was awful. I, I completely, well, I didn't completely lose it, but I mostly, almost completely lost all language. One time, you know, like five or six years ago, I completely lost language. I couldn't speak, read, or write at all, and after several hours, um, I still real struggled to even put words together in any sort of coherent order. This time, not quite that bad. I was still able to struggle and uh, comprehend language, but not really, not really. It was, a, it was really, it was a real struggle to read, to write, and to to understand spoken language. You know, when the the migraine started to get real bad, this was Tuesday, Wednesday. I was like, okay, um, I'm gonna, I can't, I'm, I'm having trouble reading and writing. I'm just gonna go ahead and take the dog for a walk. You know, I put in a podcast, can barely follow it. Uh, it was Skeptic's Guide to the Universe. They were talking about China landing something on the far side of the moon. It was, you know, it's a neat achievement, yeah, you know. And I could barely follow it, you know. The pain wasn't too awful, but I just, I had a lot of trouble thinking. And then, you know, the next couple of days, I was really out of sorts, so. Yeah, migraines can be debilitating. And for me, you know, sometimes I can go months without migraines, and then sometimes you go bam, bam, bam. I notice sometimes it's food that triggers it, and sometimes it's just stress. I haven't really noticed any stress. I mean, it's the holidays, right? But maybe it was just me trying to get back into the diurnal thing, you know, wake up in the mornings. That might have been enough. I don't know. Still, that was that was a week. That was my week. Um, 
trying to ramp up for the next semester and having just a really shitty migraine. And then, but today, today was a good day. Today was a good long day. And, uh, I feel really good about what I did today. Those tests, I feel, I feel good about them. I, 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 like I said, I want to go back and write the key and, and lay out a rubric for how I want to score every problem on there, which will probably end up making the test harder and longer. But, uh, I, I want to go ahead and do that soon. Very soon. So yeah, that was my day. That was, that was my, uh, that was my Saturday ramble. <laughs> All right, how about uh, we move on, talk a little bit of uh, uh, skeptic stuff, why don't we? All right, sort of the next thing coming up in the uh, skeptic's dictionary, allopathy. Allopathy is something that comes up from time to time in different branches of complementary and alternative medicine. The fact that this was coming up next in the skeptic feed is why I decided to go ahead and do a thing just talking about complementary and alternative medicine. Wanted to just sort of, boom, lay that groundwork, you know. And so allopathy uh, is the term that some branches of quack medicine use for actual medicine. It is a, 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 a sort of a, a back formation from homeopathy. Uh, homeopathy is a, a branch of bullshit. It it deals with making magical potions. And uh, the basis for it is... The basis of homeopathy, I should say. The basis of homeopathy is that uh, you give the patient a medicine that will cause the same symptoms as you get from the disease. I'll go into plenty of detail on homeopathy eventually, don't worry. So, like, basically, if the disease causes a fever, then you give them a medicine that also causes a fever. Um, if it causes them to cough, you give them something that makes them cough. If it gives them diarrhea, then you give them a medicine that gives them diarrhea. Uh, this is based on the founder's, basically, allergic reaction to uh, quinine. The, the bark of the quinine tree is used in India to treat malaria. You make a tea from it, you drink it... And it's somewhat effective. And he was curious, why does it work? And so he took it, and it gave him a fever, and he said, Oh, malaria gives you fevers, and this gave me a fever. Therefore, that's how it works. Brilliance. Brilliant, brilliant medical deduction. So, homeopathy says you give someone a, a, a drug that causes the same symptom as a disease. In real medicine, you don't do that. <laughs> that would very quickly kill someone. You know, someone suffering from diarrhea and you give them something that makes their diarrhea worse, they're going to get dehydrated and their electrolytes are going to go completely out of whack and they'll die, sort of thing. Somebody has a fever, you give them something to increase their fever, then they'll rapidly go into extreme hypothermia, their brain will go, they'll die, you know. Often, a big part of real medicine is managing symptoms. Quacks in the CAM fields, the various branches of the the, the bullshit, med the bullshit not medicines, uh, claim that that's like all. Well, some quacks claim that that's all that real doctors do is manage symptoms, not cure diseases. But a big part of medicine is managing symptoms. You know, if you have a chronic condition that can't be cured, you know, an an, auto an autoimmune disorder, for example, or a genetic thing. Um, it'll never go away, but you can manage the symptoms, right? And and make your life more bearable. If you've got an injury, you know, that's like just completely fucked up a nerve or back, you can manage the pain, you know, things like that. So yes, um, real medicine does deal with managing symptoms. You know, you like a cold. A cold is a viral infection. There's there's nothing you really can do for that except you know, wait for your body to fight off the cold. In the meantime, you manage the symptoms. You know, you manage the fever, you manage the uh, congestion and the coughing. So, that is allopathy. Giving a, dis a drug that combats the symptoms of the disease. So, it's, it's not used in real medicine. The term allopathy, uh, there's just no need for that. Y you have the drugs that attack the cause of the disease, and then you also have drugs that 
help you manage symptoms. So if you hear someone talking about allopathy, don't listen to them about you know really anything else. Because they're probably coming at it from homeopathy or naturopathy or some other brand of bullshit. And they don't necessarily, they probably almost certainly don't know what they're talking about. If they talk about real medicine as just allopathy. If they claim they're just treating symptoms, then they're definitely completely full of shit. For something like the common cold, yeah, you really only treat the symptoms because that's all you need to do. There are antiviral drugs you can take to fight viral infections like a cold, but that would be like spanking a baby with an axe or dropping a nuke on a village. It's just not something you would need to do for a cold. Unless, you know, you're one of the people with a, a severely damaged or suppressed immune system or something like that, you know, then you would need to uh, go after a cold with something more severe. But, you know, a, a healthy, you know, mid-30s person, nah, nah, just drink plenty of fluids. If you're really miserable, take some cold medicine, right? You know, <laughs> and, and I gotta say, managing symptoms is not nothing. But uh, let's go ahead and move away from the, the quack bullshit. Let's move on to some social justice. In fact, let's stick with the uh, allopathy. There's a, a similarly formed term that is not bullshit. It's allistic. If you spend time around autistic people, you might hear the term allistic. A-L-L-I-S-T-I-C. It's the term used to talk about people who aren't autistic. People who don't have, you know, the the different sort of neural pathways, neural setup, cognitive niceties that uh, we autistic people have. So, uh, allistic is a term that is uh, often used within uh, the community and, you know, their, their friends and loved ones to talk about uh, people who don't have autism. It's 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 a perfectly neutral term, right? But <laughs> you can occasionally see allistic people lose their shit. That's like <laughs> just sort of like how you know some cis folk uh, get all huffy at being called cis. It's like I don't need a label. I'm the normal one. Some people lose their shit at being called allistic. <laughs> uh, sensitive little babies they are. Uh, you know, it's just allistic means, um, another term is neurotypical. You know, a person with, you know, an average sort of, uh, functionality to their brain. So autistic, allistic is, uh, yeah, I don't know that allistic comes from, um, in fact, I'm going to look up real quick. I'm back. I looked it up. The, the the term allistic has the same origin after a fashion as allopathy. Uh, homeopathy means same symptom. Allopathy was meant to mean other symptom. So homeopathy, uh, the drug causes the same symptom as a disease. Allopathy was meant to say the drug causes the opposite symptom of the disease. For allism and autism, um, autism, um, like auto, aut means self. Um, not sure. I, I'm not going to dive too deep into where that comes from. It's probably some real hinky bullshit. But the, the person who coined the term allism or allistic, he was doing it as a, as a parody, I think, once upon a time. But it's, you know, a perfectly valid coinage. Ought, self, allo, or allos means other. So allistic, you know, another kind of brain. But I've heard allistic, I've also heard neurotypical. And then for autistic, you also have neurodivergent. Uh, so just different ways of talking. And then neurodivergent, I think, would be a broader term for covering um, not just autistic people, but people with, you know, atypical neural function. You know, you know it could easily cover. I don't know that it's used this way broadly. It could easily cover, uh, you know, say depression or schizophrenia or anything else, really. So that is allistic and neurotypical as opposed to autistic or neurodivergent. 
a nice little tie-in for social justice with uh, uh, the, 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 the skeptical term of allopathy that I talked about earlier. And then, of course, I got a good long ramble in talking about uh, uh, my day and my week, which, yeah, it was good. It was good. I may go with something like this moving forward, you know, just chat about how the way things have gone and then talk a little bit about uh, a little bit of vocab. I don't know. I kind of like this. A little bit more relaxed. But I definitely, definitely didn't have it in me to uh, <laughs> get any sort of work done, which was my top priority, and script something this week. But still, I, I, I'm feeling pretty good about the way this has turned out. All right, uh, that'll do it, I think. I'm going to go ahead and call it for the week. I'll edit this down a bit, obviously. And uh, thank you for stopping by. Uh, let me talk at you for a little bit. Uh, if you like what I'm doing here, um, please you know, like it on the YouTube, give it the old thumbs up, or hop over to iTunes and give it uh, a nice little review, leave a nice comment for me if you can. If you want to talk back at me, you can uh, find, obviously, the YouTube channel, Social Justice Alchemy. You can leave comments under the videos. Or you can hunt down the blog. Um, that's sergoshan.blogspot.com, S-U-R-G-O-S-H-A-N, link in the thingy, dot blogspot.com, where, when I have been scripting these, that's where I put the scripts. Okay, if you're looking for something completely different, I take part in a real podcast. Uh, it's a D&D podcast, Dungeons and Debacles, um, hosted by my friend Kevin. Uh, we're playing an evil party, uh, looking to unleash an ancient red dragon to, to destroy the world of Suel. It's a heck of a lot of fun. We've been, we've been, uh, really enjoying it. Um, we have really hit our groove, I think, uh, in role playing and gameplay, all of it. All of it. It's a, it's a heck of a lot of fun. Dungeons and Debacles Podcast dot com. I really like that. You can also find that on iTunes. Dungeons and Debacles. Heck of a lot of fun. All right. Uh, that has been it for Social Justice Alchemy. I'm your alchemist, John Brockman. I'll see you next week. <laughs>